Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our super series final episode for this series, All Roads Lead Home. My name is Stephanie Milburn. I'm your house in the car chair. I am joined by my lovely co-host, Miss Erica Rawls. Hello, hello, hello. Stephanie's our last one for this series. For yes, this yes, yes. This is our last episode for the yes for this series, guys. This is our final episode for our All Roads Lead Home series, and it has been such a wonderful series. We started out with navigating your route, and that um, episode we just talked about how you know everything that you needed to do to get started on your home buying journey, trying to find out what realtor works best for you, uh, what your credit score needs to be, just some of the beginning steps, just so you can get started on this journey. And so you can get those keys at the end. Right. And then we talked that we had the, another great series. I mean, uh, episode green light um, to starting your journey. And that's when we talked about our, the lender, we had a lender on the show and we actually talk about financing and the different, different types of financing that you can actually um, uh, apply for based on credit, um, your debt to income ratio, um, and, um, and also some other criteria uh, that we actually talked about. So that was actually a really good one, Stephanie. That was a good one. That was a really good one. And, you know, it's all about getting that pre-approval because you don't want to start shopping um, without your pre-approval. So that episode was to let you know, hey, you've got your green light to go shopping. And, you know, we don't want to begin that process without knowing how much you're approved for. So not what you can afford, but, you know, really what's going to be the best price for you in that, in that arena so yeah then we moved on and uh our third episode was cruising we were cruising we were cruising, yes. cruising <laughs> down that highway we're out shopping we have our pre-approval in hand so we thank you guys we had uh, a lovely ambassador ursula on to talk about you know what it's like to go out and you know and, and in this market we talked about how crucial it is to be very vigilant and putting in these offers because it's definitely a seller's market right now. Right, right. And she was able to shed some light on um, some strategies too, to win an offer. So we really appreciated her coming on. And then the next yeah, one. Yeah, so then oh, oh, we were inspecting inspection for your protection guys so make sure that you're getting an inspection but we did learn in some states that um you know people are waiving uh inspections and just doing things because it's such a tough market that they're out there foregoing some of the crucial things that are necessary for you as a homeowner so guys please protect yourself and make sure that you're getting a home inspection and so then I were Stephanie, I remember us having a healthy debate of whether or not we should have inspections or not. So that was a really good one. So please tune back into that one. What was that episode? Was it... That was episode four. Four. Check that one out. Yes. Yeah, but one of the most interesting ones uh, yet is our episode five. And that was when we had our appraisal expert on. The appraiser was amazing. And we learned a lot of great information on that show as well. So I would say definitely take a, a, a look at all of the shows from this episode, but the uh, inspection and appraiser shows definitely shed some light on things that you should do and not do in this market um, when it comes to uh, you know listing your home or when it comes to setting the price or you know sending in offers you know that are above list because we know that that's going on right now in this market that's right yeah and um that was jim young so he was an appraiser here in central pa so i had to give him a shout out for that he did a great job that was a that was a really really good show and now we are finally we are finally at the closing table and i'm excited to have our special guest on kip edwards i've worked with kip many times and he's awesome and he started his own business so when we started out he was with patriot title and now he is with white star which he started his own business so i'm going to introduce kip and let him give a little bit about himself kip welcome to the show thank you thank you for having me ready for me to get started yes yes yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about, a little bit about tell us about absolutely. yourself and tell us a little bit about white star title absolutely 
So um, I started my real estate career as soon as I graduated from college about 20 years ago. Um, I was in new home sales with KB Home and Meritage Homes. And then I was doing that for about eight years. I loved the whole process. I bought my first um, house as soon as I graduated from college. It's kind of like my graduation present. Mm -hmm. So during that time, the process of buying a home and owning a home was awesome to me. So I was like, oh, since I wasn't going to be a football player, real estate was my, <laughs> my next best thing, right? Um, so going through that process of watching, um, you know, working with the lenders, working with my realtor, watching the home being constructed, um, just new homes was everything that I wanted to go into. Um, so I did that for eight years where I built relationships with a whole bunch of people who's doing real estate transactions. Um, all these realtors who was bringing their clients to me when I was in the new home um, sales model. And then after that, um, I went on to move into um, the world of commercial real estate. So I started working for the Coastal Group, who owns apartments.com, LoopNet, Biz by Sale. Started learning about commercial real estate, um, analytics, data, statistics, whether you should build a sky rise or a shopping center or a grocery store or an apartment building. Um, so I learned a whole bunch about commercial real estate, oh, wow. um, working with a lot of commercial real estate um, investors. So one of my clients was Patriot Title at the time. And they was like, hey, kid, why don't you buy a franchise of Patriot Title? Look, you have a relationship with a lot of people who's doing real estate transactions. Um, and that's a part of um, basically the title company, right? Establishing relationships with all parties involved in the real estate transaction, just being a neutral third party. Um, so I never had my real estate license, never had my loan officer license, but I know a lot of real estate from all spectrums. Um, and and the systems around it um so started with patriot title um owned my franchise in Pearland uh, for four years and then we opened up an additional office in east downtown houston um for like two more years and then i was doing all this work and i was doing a, putting 100 percent of the effort in but i was paying this franchise fee right so um, when COVID came, I had a lot of time to myself to really sit down and think about what I want to do long term as far as what is my game plan with this title company and with this industry. So my friends and uh, people, my clients, my real estate clients pushed me as like, hey, Kip, it's not very many minority owned title companies and especially black owned, black owned title companies, probably like less, less than 1% uh, nationwide. Oh, wow. So I was like, okay, I've been in this game for a while. I got about 20 years of real estate experience. And um, I have a very supportive team um, in, inside my community, friends, family, realtors. So they was like, hey, let's do it. Right now is probably the best time to do it. So in um, the full fledged of COVID 2020, October 2020, Texas Department of Insurance um, approved us to start our own title agency. And I picked the White Star title as the name because we are in Texas, so it's the whole Lone Star State. Um, I'm a huge Dallas Cowboys fan, even though I'm from Houston. Uh, but my quarterback from high school played for the Cowboys, mm. so that's kind of the symbol <laughs> I know. But look, I like the Astros too, right? So the star was just perfect. And um, I figured White Star title was the name. It just fits. Um, so we started our agency October 2020. And it's crazy to say, like, I was in oh, yeah. uh, owning a title company for six years. And in January of 2020, we had our best month ever. Like I never ever seen so many real estate transactions happen. Um, so going like that, that was like two months after we started. And now we have five locations. We have four in Houston, one in Dallas. And um, I would say in 2022, we'll have one in California um, and Louisiana as well. So it's just been great like the community has been supporting us and we've been supporting the community as well um so when anybody asks me to do something for the community i'm always there and my team is always there as well um so that's kind of how we got started with white star title um and we look forward to doing many many more um amazing things and i do want to say we are um sponsoring a couple of things now so my thing is all about educating the community um, so we're going to offer four scholarships during the year to like mid right before school Love started it. and then two during our holiday gala. But when I say scholarships, I want to personally pay for somebody to get their real estate license and somebody to get their loan officer license. Um, so we're going to do that um, at the probably right before New Year's Eve. And then again, when the summertime happens, so people have time to really go get there, especially college students. I want our 
high school students going to college. I wanted to make sure they use that summer while and get their real estate license, get their loan office license. Um, I think it's just a way to give back to the community because um, a part of my thing with White Star Title is let's give back to the community because I feel like the community gives us a lot. Um, yeah. So we definitely strive on doing that as well. I'm busting at wow, the scene, Stephanie. <laughs> I know it's a lot of information real quick. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been knowing Kip for years and some of this information I just learned. So, you know, and then he said he'd been in the business for 20 years. I thought he was like 25 years old. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> that was too funny. Uh, no, but um, thank you for joining our show and your story is amazing. So, you know, all, yes. all of our... Uh, all of our audience and listeners, if you're tuning in, um, you know, you too can own a title company. So, you know, please, please reach out to Kip if that's something that you're interested in. Um, I think that that's a wonderful thing that that he's doing and the whole give back to the community. We love it. Uh, you know, you'll probably be hearing from me because house in the car also has uh you know a link on our website for a uh, real estate school so you know i think that that's something we can definitely partner with later on to offer uh you know the scholarship to someone who's interested in you know becoming a real estate agent and like you said uh you know a loan officer so the real estate industry is definitely booming and even though there's so many um agents out there now uh, we're always looking for you know new talent and new people to of course pour into the community Community because home ownership is de definitely about the community and we want to increase the numbers for our African-American home ownership because mm -hmm. uh, we we're tending to uh, be the lowest in this area uh, every year so we want to make sure that uh, the black community is educated and we know uh, you know what it takes to to purchase a home and become a homeowner so you know not only uh, you know financially want them to know that it is about building wealth in the community it's about leaving a legacy for your family so thank you so much Kim for joining us today that that your story is amazing so guys if you're just tuning in we are on our final episode of our series all rose leaves home and today we are at the closing table and Kip why don't you tell us a little bit about what it takes to get to the closing table because I know sometimes you know people have delays and they're like oh I was supposed to close on this day but I'm not closing anymore so you know what could be some of the things that would prevent someone or delay someone from getting getting to the closing table. Absolutely. So, you know, the real estate transaction is definitely a process from the beginning of looking for a home, working with your realtor, signing a contract. So our job as far as the title company is to make sure that transaction goes smoothly uh, from step one. Um, so when we do get a contract and start that process, um, that's a lot of people. That work. I have a team that works behind me and they pretty much work 24 7. If I need them, they're going to make sure we get it done. Um, so when we get your contract from your realtor, we'll start the process of doing the examination, right? So we want to make sure that the property is free and clear. Mm -hmm. So when we do our examinations, we put a lot of stuff from the county records, um, a lot of personal information. That way we can make sure the person selling your home is that correct person who can sell that particular property. Um, also, we're going to do a lot of research on that property. So we're going to look at any judgments, any tax liens, anything that could hinder from that title being free and clear. And then we're also going to work with your lender, right? So it's like three things that's going on at the same time. So we're going to work with your lender, make sure that the um, they have all the documentation that they need to get your loan done. So all this is done simultaneously. Things that could hinder that is um, not getting the information that we need to make sure that the title is free and clear from the seller, right? So we need like a seller information sheet. Um, that way we can pull any taxes, we can pull any payoffs, um, we can run that background check. Um, so that a lot of times just filling out that one page to get letting us get that authorization to get that information um, could slow down the process. Or if we don't get the information to your lender quick enough, that could hinder the buyer's process as well. So I make sure my team is on top of, I always tell there is a certain date on the contract that might say 30 days from the time that we get it. I always tell my team, we need to be prepared seven days before that date. So we don't mind closing early, but we better not be closing late because I'm in it just like everybody else, right? I want to yeah. make sure um, y'all get y'all home um, because I think the, the most satisfactory thing of my job is by the time y'all see me, 
I mean, everything is already done, right? So I'm the person who actually get to um, take picture with the keys, make sure you get your keys, finalize everything. So by the time you see me, it should be like the happiest moment, um, have one of the happiest moments in your life, right? So um, we try not to have anything slow down the process. Um, so my job is to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, and a lot of times it doesn't, it, like we'll know way before time, um, things that we need to do to make sure everything's get resolved. So, um, my job is to make sure everything goes smoothly. We facilitate this transaction, working with your realtor, your lenders, all parties that's involved in the real estate transaction. Um, so if anything does happen to slow it down, please give me a call personally, anytime on my <laughs> cell phone, I'll make sure my team gets this thing going. Um, so it shouldn't be any hiccups at all. I know things does come up, come up. Um, but my job is to communicate those as well so we can resolve those issues. Right. Yeah. And I think one of the, the, the good title companies, they're good at being proactive, like seeing that, okay, there's going to be an issue with this title because X, Y, and Z. And then notifying the, the realtor on the seller side, you know, saying, hey, you know what, we're going to have issues with this. We're going to need to talk to the owners directly uh, just to try to mitigate the um you know, the, the issue as much as possible without it affecting closing. So that's one of the things I think is really important is communication. So I appreciate you bringing that up because um, a lot of times people think that, oh, well, we'll just take care of it. And then they tell us that the last minute when they should have said something as soon as they heard about it, it's not necessarily talking to the client. You're talking to that realtor and give the realtor the opportunity to try to resolve it, you know, because that's what they hired us to do. So having that partnership is really important. So I'm happy to hear you say that. Correct. Absolutely. Because I'm in it like y'all. I'm sorry, Steph. I just want to say I'm in it the same as y'all, right? Because y'all uh, relying on getting your commissions, the the sellers relying on getting their proceeds, right? And believe me, if the deal don't close, I don't get paid either. So I'm invested <laughs> right. in this transaction just as much as y'all. Um, I have a team that gets paid no matter what, right? But um, me, myself, I'm in it with you. So if it doesn't close, then I'm not getting a check either. So it's in my best interest to make sure these things happen. And I tell everybody, even though we're not a big um, title company like Stuart Title, um, I do pride myself on being flexible, right? So we don't mind closing after hours. We don't mind working on the weekends. If we need to schedule closings on the weekends, best believe we're doing that. And we can close anywhere in Texas. Um, if it's here locally in Houston, then we do complimentary mobile closing. So if you can't take off from your job, I'll meet you at your job on your lunch break on your 15 minute break. Um, if you can't um, get off Monday through Friday, cool. Saturday, that's work. Sunday after church, let's go get these documents signed. Um, if you need me to meet you at 10, 11, 12 at nighttime to get documents signed, okay. then that's what we'll do. So I strive on myself, like I say, like um, I want everybody to own a home. So we yeah. strive on being a, uh, a flexible boutique tech savvy title company. I think that's what sets us apart from everybody else, right? We'll do, we wanted to do what it takes and there's no excuses um, that's going to allow us not to make this thing happen. Well, one thing that Erica said, and then she mentioned, she said, oh, the good title companies, which would allude <laughs> to the fact that there are some bad title companies, but we're, we're, we're not even going to get into that because that's probably a whole nother episode. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I like the fact that you did mention too, Kip, that you have made relationships with people because uh, what we do is once we, we work with someone at a good title company, we want to continue working with them. So, you yeah. know, we're doing several transactions there, uh, you know, and, and I like the fact that you said that you're flexible because the way that people's mm -hmm. schedules are these days, uh, they are working, they are busy, they they do have kids, they do have, you know, other responsibilities and priorities that they, they may not be able to take an hour or two out of their day to sign some documents. So that's a really good thing uh, that you guys are very flexible like that. So uh, Kip is located in uh, Houston, uh, Dallas, and he has uh, more more offices to be opening up uh, in the coming, uh, you know, years. So guys, please pay attention to, uh, you know, White Star Title and what they're doing in the community. So one thing that I want to talk about, uh, and I don't know if this is the same uh, where you are, Erica, but uh, like Kip said, we have to have a relationship with the lender. So uh, we need to make sure that, 
you know, all the documents are in place, the CD is balanced. And so what does that, uh, what does that time frame look like Kip, um, before someone can actually come in and sign their papers? Yeah, so I know, I know technically the lender is supposed to send out a uh, preliminary closing disclosure three days before closing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they'll send one out just to have one out, um, but it might not be the correct one. So I tell my people, we need to at least have it to all parties within 24 hours to review, right? Before you mm -hmm. come in, sometimes people come in closing, don't know how much they need to bring or just on the seller side, don't know how much they're going to receive, right? Um, so I like to send hours out. We'll send out three days based on um, the lender, but if anything changes, we need to resend it out to all parties. Um, communication is the key, and I also think transparency is the key. Um, so we'd like to send it out and get everybody to approve our settlement statements before we actually come to close it. That way, it won't be any confusion once you come to close it because you already have a lot of stuff to worry about once you get to the closing table, right? You got you worried about your appraisal, you worried about your loan, you worried about your movers. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen really, really fast during the closing closing day. So I like to have everything done. Any questions asked? Um, by the time you come to the close table, I don't want you to sit here trying to read it all in because you're already feeling this pressure of getting everything signed. So look, we'll try to send everything for review at least 24 hours before. That way, when you close, come to the closing table, you already have reviewed it and you already have your questions ready for us to answer. Um, that way, it makes the transaction go smoothly because the last thing you're thinking about is worrying about your loan or what's going on, why these numbers changing. If you know before time, right. um, you're aware when you come to the closing table, let's make it smooth. Um, let's have fun, right? Let's 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 pop some champagne bottles, take pictures, and um, celebrate because it is a time for celebration. So um, all the settlement statements need to be done way before closings, at minimum 24 hours, but you should have it within five to seven and no less than three days before closing. Of celebrations, uh, you know, we like to celebrate home ownership, and we do uh, that on our show, Home Ownership Changed My Life. But um, when COVID started, did, did you were you uh, were you scared to start your business? Were you uh, were you surprised to see uh, you know so many transactions during the pandemic? Because you know a lot of people felt like, oh, you know, real estate, real estate industry is going to suffer. You know, were you surprised that uh, you know we didn't take the hit that you know people thought would uh, you know would affect us in the beginning? Um, I can't say I was just super surprised. I know that more people was working from home, right? So now people got a chance to really look at their residential properties like, hey, I need a home office. Now I'm working from home all the time. So I think it changed for people to realize what they really needed as for a home. Because, I mean, you're in there all the time now. So now you might want to move the theater because, I mean, you don't have nothing to do during COVID. You might need a home office because you're not going to the office. Um, so I honestly, I wasn't surprised that the, the market was going to be awesome. Um, I figured commercial was going down a little bit, right? Commercial leasing, um, commercial buildings, because people was working from home. And if you're going to be comfortable, if you're going to be in your house for a year or two years, you might as well make your home comfortable, right? right. So there was a lot of transactions going on. Some people start to realize, hey, my kids are home too, so they need a place for, there to do the, for them to do their schoolwork. Um, so I wasn't surprised that transaction was going to happen. Um, and for me, I don't think I was, like, I think it was the perfect time for me to start my business. I did, I did, I was kind of nervous, but I knew we was at home all the time. And it's funny, uh, me and my friends play poker uh, once a week. So we was playing poker three or four times a week at somebody's house, right? So now people want to make sure their house is nice all the time. People's <laughs> like, oh, I might need a beer gut house. So they was like, nah, Kip, you should start your own title company. It's like the perfect time. Everybody at home, right? So people are looking to be in a nice, comfortable um, environment. And it just so happened. It, I don't know. It was a blessing. Like, I was like, man, people losing their jobs. But, you know, let's see what we can do to make things a little bit more comfortable for it, which we know that since the economy was kind of changing, real estate changes. Sometimes people start to realize, hey, I don't need this big house. I might need a, right. a more comfortable house, right? Because the, I mean, the people was their income was affected. Um, so I just knew anytime there's a change, real estate change, right? Whether you need to buy a bigger house, smaller house, as long as you're doing a, a real estate transaction, that's what we're here for. Um, and things might change in a, in, in a couple of years as well, right? More jobs are coming on board. Now, 
people need some shoes and have another again within others. Um, that's my forecast of it. And I do look at a lot of analytics and data and statistics. Um, so that's what I foresee, just being in the commercial world, investment world. Um, luckily, the title company is a new to third party, and I get to work with a lot of buyers, sellers, builders, investors. So I get to hear different aspects of real estate all the time. Uh, uh, it's some of the different months, which they probably said up eight to 10 deals, which is a lot of deals for one person. But the title company is doing we on average doing about 50, 60 transactions per month. So when people say, you don't have a lot of experience, I'm like, no, I've been doing this for quite a bit. Yeah. Like when I was in new homes, so we were doing 50 to 60 transactions per month, per month there. So now I probably in my lifetime, probably did over 20,000 real estate transactions. Um, so I'm pretty well-rounded on knowing a little bit about all aspects and the entire spectrum of real estate. So I haven't seen anything um, out of the ordinary to me, people are like, ooh, what's the worst thing to happen? I can tell you some stories just because I've been involved so much. Um, and I can kind of tell what's going to go on in the marketplace as well. So um, use your title company for knowledge, right? We have a lot of right. information, a lot of data, just luckily. Um, so I tell people all the time, call me like, you're getting the free legal advice. We have about three attorneys on staff. Call me first. I probably can direct you in, in the right place to go. Just luckily, I've been in a position to work with so many real estate professionals um, all across the board. So, like I said, feel free to call me anytime. Like, I don't, don't want to hide any information. I'm not competing with anybody. Um, my goal, my ultimate goal is to make sure um, you get a home, you own property, you own real estate, because that's the way for us to build generational wealth. Um, and it took me a while to get to it myself. So now I'm at a point where I buy a lot of real estate. I invest in a lot of real estate. I have people buying real estate with me because um, I want my friends and family to have that satisfaction. We have something um, intangible that is going to help us grow in the long run. And, and we can pass it down to family members or kids or grandkids. Um, so now I'm looking at the long term and I tell people, and it's funny that y'all have the whole, because I really like cars, right? And I'm glad y'all have this series, um, House Before the Car, right? Because my mindset, I would say about three or four years ago, like, hey, I want a, I want a nice car, right? And I worry about the whole real estate stuff later, because, but I was renting a nice apartment too. So I was like, now nah, it's time for me to buy a house. So this thing is funny. Stephanie Collins was like, hey, keep you want to be on this show? I was like, absolutely, because I was one of the people who was definitely buying my car before my house and I had to change my total mindset and um, I saw the big picture and I talked to my financial planner. He's like, keep thinking about real estate first. I know you like these cool cars, um, but make sure you have more real estate than you do vehicles. So it, it was a, a, a great thing to hear from Stephanie about this. Yeah. And I think you might need to come back and talk about investments, Stephanie. Because you, yeah, I could tell. Well, that you and, be... and you know what? That is going to be, yeah, absolutely. That's going to be um, in our next series. So we'll come back in September and we're going to start a new series and it's going to be around investment. So we're definitely going to reach out. Um, guys, if you have been out there making some investment deals, you want to share your stories, uh, mm -hmm. let us know because we are going to create a series around investing. So we want to teach the community about investing, not just personal purchasing a home for yourself and your family, but to, you know, expand your portfolio, uh, expand your, uh, you know, your financial wealth and, uh, you know, continue to build and have this legacy so that you can leave, uh, you know, for your family. So we definitely want to have people on the show that will share the knowledge of, you know, the investment process and just different aspects of it so you know especially in different areas of the country so we can definitely have kip on yeah. because he's in houston texas or you know someone from central pa you know because it's a lot different the properties are different like i when i was in ohio recently for uh the the NARAB conference you know you can definitely see how you know things are different like i was talking to our uber driver and he was very informative uh talking about investing in ohio so it's different you know in different places they have a lot of multi-family properties and we talk about that uh, you know, in our investment series. Well, in Houston, Texas, we don't have, you know, an influx of multifamily properties. How Ever this year and last year, we've been seeing a lot more mm -hmm. families coming up, but, you know, in, in, in a lot of, um, you know, areas on the East Coast and, you know, in those parts of the country, 
that's you know pretty much what you see in you know many areas. So we talk about the the first time buyers purchasing a multifamily property and living in one side and you know leasing out the other so that they can start the whole process of becoming an investor, uh, you know, building uh, wealth and you know just the whole landlord process. So yeah, we will we will have a series mm -hmm. coming up, guys, and um, I'm excited, but you know on this closing table episode we we we're talking about you know getting you guys the keys it's a celebration and you know I, we have talked about you know making this a big deal so home ownership should be a celebration for everybody it should be a big deal kip have you seen you know in this era because you know tiktok is so popular and uh you know just the whole video wave you see like a lot of people coming in and wanting to you know do videos and you know more of you know like these big celebrations when they're at the closing table absolutely and i i strongly encourage it right so i don't i oh, asked them of course great. i hey you mind if i take like put my camera up for you um just because they you know they kind of emotional so um we always like so my thing is this year in our closing room we want to have a board full of everybody who close to deal with us in um 2022 right so we actually setting up a whole room of all our closings all the pictures um because it is a celebration so people do come in with a with a lot of are doing some nice gifts to take away with them and then um even before they get into the closing room so now i have every tv set up so if they're doing a traditional deal with one of my realtors i ask the realtors for all their pictures they took on mls on heart and we do a slideshow while they signing their paperwork of uh, pictures um, of their house that they buying right um, so that way they can kind of get that feeling like, oh, we got pictures up, welcome, we got their name on the screens. I mean, it's a big thing. It's like coming out of a um, of a full, it's like a recruiting trip, right? Like, hey, we, when we going out loud, we got the champagne bottles ready on ice. Um, so we make it a great experience. We want them to know that they are um, VIP superstar clients. Um, so I, I strongly encourage all the videos, all the pictures, bring whoever you want to, because for a long time we couldn't do anything, right? Because of COVID. So I tell everybody, hey, come, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate this moment. Uh, so we strongly encourage it. That's awesome. So did I you say it. you're um, opening a branch in uh, Pennsylvania? Did I hear you say that? Soon, it's coming soon, Erica, we'll be there soon. <laughs> okay. I need enough deals from you. <laughs> okay, okay, we can talk. <laughs> We can definitely talk. <laughs> oh, I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. Go ahead, Stephanie. No, I'm just saying I love the whole celebration. Like I am so big on, you know, celebrating. And yeah, this year, you know, I wasn't able to attend a lot of closings, uh, you know, with my clients due to COVID. So I'm looking forward to definitely uh, celebrating with my clients. Um, you know, one thing that Eric and I talked about during our Home Ownership Changed My Life show is that, you know, we want to make a big production and, you know, have a videographer in there and, you know, give that to our clients as a closing gift, you know, as part of their closing gifts. Hey, we've got this video for you. This is your party. This is your celebration. This is a big deal. And we want to share it with you. And, you know, I think that that celebration process is very important. Uh, you know, letting someone know how important home ownership is. And we know that it's such a big step, such a life changing event that should be celebrated. Yeah, we actually did have one um, millennial, uh, coincidentally, came in with his own production crew. I mean, it was a one man crew, but still he had a production crew with him. He's like, okay, so can we take a shot over here? How about over here? He went to talk. I'm just like, okay, let's do this. I, I wish I would have had the red carpet for him because he was ready. And he shared his video with us and it was just, it was beautiful. You could tell he was really happy. He was really happy. So that's a great idea. I love it. I do too. So Kip, tell the audience how they can reach you and White Star Title. Absolutely. Um, you can call me anytime on my cell phone. That number is 832-984-4056. Um, I'm all on social media and it's just my name, Kip Edwards. So look up on Facebook or Instagram, just type in Kip Edwards and you'll see me pull up. Um, anything White Star Title. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. So what's Instagram your number again? Well. I'm gonna put it in there for you. You said eight three two. Eight three two. Uh huh. Nine eight four. Yep. Four zero five six. Got it. And then my Instagram and Facebook is just Kip Edwards. 
Um, and our white our um, website is whitestartitle.com. Um, but I mean, like I said, we have a lot of events going on, a lot of stuff happening. So look for us um, the rest of this year and especially next year. Well, Kip, while Erica's typing that information in, we do have a question from the audience. Mr. Donnell Williams says, Kip, can you just repeat the importance of having title work done on your purchases, whether family members or not? Absolutely. Um, so the responsibilities of the title company is make sure there's no fraud in title, right? Um, so we do a lot of background research to make sure there's no taxes owed, no judgments, nothing that's gonna hinder the closing or the title. Um, so our job as a title company is basically do a lot of research, a lot of stuff legally uh, to make sure that's not happening. Um, and then we'll issue a title policy letting you know that you are getting this policy free and clear. So it gives the buyer a peace of mind. Um, so we'll make sure we know who the people who is selling the property, um, that they are the correct people. So we'll do that research. And then um, we will also make sure that there's no encumbrance on the title and then make sure the buyer is the ones who can buy the property uh, so we check on the buyers as well so we do a back, uh, we do a research on sellers the property and the buyer um, so that we know the transaction is going smoothly so even after we close the title company responsibility is make sure that everything is recorded with the county so our job is not over so we're making sure that the, uh, the ownership is being transferred correctly. So a lot of stuff the title company do is all the legal aspects of transferring the ownership and providing an insurance policy saying that you are getting this property uh, free and clear and we guarantee and that transaction is happening that way. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it is very important to have a clear title when you're purchasing homes. So that is one of the very first steps in the title process. So that is why, you know, Kip has uh, explained that again. And, you know, like he said, as soon as they get the contract, they start working on your title policy and ensuring that there's no clouds on the title. So guys, please, please, Please make sure that you're doing your transactions with a reputable title company, as Erica would say, a good title company. <laughs> and we don't want to use the bad ones. So, um, you know, check in your area, uh, read the reviews, make sure that you are using someone that's knowledgeable. Like Kip says, he has 20 years experience in real estate. And, you know, I trust him. I've used him several times. I refer my friends, my family. Um, he just did a transaction for my uncle. So that was some a transaction that was very near and dear to my, um, you know, to my family because that was my my deceased grandmother's home. So, you know, we trust him and, uh, you know, it, it's great to have these connections and relationships with people that you trust because, again, we've stated that purchasing a home, selling a home, these things are, you know, very, you know, important and life-changing events. You know, a lot of people get attached to their homes. And so when you're selling, you still want to make sure that you're doing the transaction uh, with the title company, because we have a lot of times people say, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, sell my house. They may think that they could do their own paperwork, especially those who think they can sell the house on their own, think that they can do their own title work and mm -hmm. stuff too. But uh, you cannot do that. It's not, um, it's not recommended. Please, please seek out the professionals and we we are talking to a professional today, Kip Edwards with White Star Title. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Kip, do you have any, you know, last words or any recommendations, any tips and tricks that you want to share with either our consumer audience or any of our, uh, you know, realtor audience? Absolutely. Um, I always say use, use a realtor for any transaction and make sure you're not just signing over deeds. Uh, make sure you go through a title company because title fees, um, it's very minimal. It's less than 1%, but it will save you a lot of money in the long run. Um, just talk to a lot of, a lot of professionals in real estate. Um, everybody has what they specialize in. They have expertise. Um, so I always say talk to your real estate professionals before you do make any real estate moves. And um, I want to say thank y'all for having me. And I look forward to seeing y'all at the closing table. Absolutely. You'll be seeing me at the closing table along with my clients. We're going to have a big party. So I'm, I'm going to be uh, reaching out to you. Hopefully uh, we, you will work with House and the Car in the future. So we like what you're doing in the community so we want you to uh, continue yeah. that and uh you know work with us throughout uh you know our journey of increasing 
Black Home Ownership. So, Kip, thank you again for joining us. Erica, do we have any uh, other audience questions? None that I see, but I really appreciate the information you provided because um, it's not often that you get someone from the title company um, educating, you know, um, the audience. So thank you for that. It was very valuable information that you provided. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for that. I learned something. Thank y'all. Yeah. I learned something. So I learned that I need to call you later. Yep. All okay. right. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. But it was a pleasure. It really was getting to know you. Thank you. Yes, guys. Yeah. So thank you everyone for tuning in. We just want to let you know that we will be taking a break for this month of August and we'll be back with our new Super Series Tuesday series in September. So we don't want to spoil it for you guys, but we will be talking about investments. So we're talking about we'll have a whole new series for you and we're it's going to be surrounded uh, with investments. So uh, we're all about educating the community. So we're, we're taking this time to make sure that we have the best and the brightest to speak to you and to inform you guys on how to become an investor, how to invest for yourself, how to invest for your family, and how to invest for your future. So tune in, stay tuned, guys. We will be back in September. All our shows will return in September. So we're going to take a small little break just so that we can uh, get some new content and create something great for you guys. Stay, um, stay tuned with House in a Car. You can always always go to our website. So we're, our website is 24-7. We're at houseinthecar.com. We have resources available for you. Whether we're on live or not, you can still go to houseinthecar.com. We have our down payment resources. We have our uh, FICO score estimator, our real estate school. So please, guys, please utilize our houseinthecar.com website for all of your home ownership needs for your budgeting needs we have an interactive uh online budget so that's one of the first things that you need to start with before you make your purchase and even after you buy your house these are some tools that you can use so we're not just uh here for you during the home buying process but we're here uh after you purchase your home so again thank you to kip edwards thank you to my co-host erica ross and we will see you guys later